Hello and welcome to Ferrer Rugby on Ferrer Sports for an update on Johan Daisel, who is out of the World Cup. Uh, his disciplinary decision was confirmed today and uh, has been given the max sanction, which has been mitigated slightly down from in terms of the length of, of, uh, of, of the actual ban. But he has been given the max possible sanction for that challenge um, on Antoine Dupont, which currently now has the, the scrum up in a race against time. Uh, to get ready for the semi-finals and hopefully apparently the semi-final return potentially um so it's a huge blow for namibia who will be without their captain uh, they're pretty much on the news already that they were going they weren't going to have him for uh you know this, this game tomorrow and uh it's a big blow he's a good player he's a he's, he's a proper uh, heart and sleeve type captain i thought he's been playing pretty well as well for namibia so he's going to be a massive blow to the team as a player perspective more than also just obviously the leadership but before we sort of go through the entire process and uh, how the band was decided please do smash like on the video please do subscribe to the channel as well right so he attended an independent disciplinary committee hearing uh, for an offense to law 9.13 which is a dangerous tackle as a result of a review by the foul play review office official uh, that whole team of bunker and um he appeared in front of a, uh, a committee which was uh, comprised as follows it was chaired by adam uh, castledon from Australia, and he was joined by former international referees Donald Courtney and Juan Pablo Sperandelli, who are from Ireland and Argentina, respectively. Uh, the player accepted the foul play had occurred and that the offence warranted a red card. Interesting, because often that doesn't, often, often people will, 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 will argue that it wasn't a red card threshold. A lot of people will say that it, there was foul play, but they're not, but you know, they don't believe it was red card. It was a bad challenge. It was as soon as we saw it, you know, leading with his hair full on, um, you know, uh, leading, going to the full tilt, for example, there wasn't really a big height. So there was, it, was, it was difficult to find any mitigation. So it wasn't a great challenge at all. Um, they said that uh, having considered all the evidence, uh, the submissions by the player and his representative, the independent committee categorized the act of foul play as being at the top end of the scale of seriousness of offending. We haven't actually seen this. Um, at the World Cup just yet. Having regard to the degree of recklessness involved in the offending, the vulnerability of the victim player, and the significant injury to him. Uh, applying Appendix 1 to Regulation 17, the Independent Committee determined that the applicable entry point is 12 matches. That is the that is the biggest ban you can receive, 12 matches. One thing I will say is I've never enjoyed the fact that the extent of the injury comes into it. I think that is a really, really poor thing to include. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, a decision should not be taken for me based on how you know what happened with the individual player because you can create you can have a legal tackle for example that can um that can seriously injure a player you can have an illegal play a tackle which doesn't injure a player so i always think that you know injuries can be a freak thing injuries can depend on the player can depend on so many different things so to determine a ban based on the in, on, on the extent of the injury of the of the individual player i think for me has always been a bit of a dangerous road you know, it's it's such a fraction. You know, he he hits Antoine Dupont with a cheekbone, fractures cheekbone. Therefore, they say right, it's, it's serious, uh, and therefore he deserves this ban. If he had missed, the, for example, a cheek and he'd make him lose him somewhere else in his head, you know, and he doesn't suffer a, a fractured cheekbone, all of a sudden the, the tackle's less dangerous. It's not less dangerous. The tackle is either dangerous or it's not dangerous. It's either legal or it's not legal. I don't think that the injury to the player should really come into the conversation at all. Uh, you know, there are so many tackles which could have been. Uh, you know, really bad and could result in a lot of injuries that didn't. And therefore, you know, now we need to reduce bans. So I don't think that I've never been a fan of that being included within the actual uh, ban itself. Um, so there, in terms of mitigation with regards to the ban itself, um, they did consider the following mitigating factors, which is the admission of foul play and the correctness of the red card and the first opportunity, um, his disciplinary record and the apology to the player. Also, because he said sorry to Anton Dupont, that also helps apparently again. I think it's a pretty silly thing to even begin to include. Um, the independent committee reduced the sanction by a maximum mitigation of 50%. The final six matches is applied as follows. The Uruguay versus Namibia. And then depending on what his playing schedule is, that will then be confirmed. Uh, the player, however, tends to take part in the World Rugby coaching intervention. So he will be going to tackle school. And um, if he does complete that, a further one match ban will be reduced. So at this stage, Daisel is sitting with a five match ban. Um, which obviously rules him out of the World Cup with Namibia having just one game remaining. Um, however, the player has the right of appeal within 48 hours of the issuing of the full written decision, which will appear, um, which is only on the World Rugby website. So he can appeal that. It'd be interesting to see if he does and maybe sort of looks to try and get that 
reduced down to a you know a three or four match ban. Uh, if it was the beginning of the tournament, I think they'd probably look at it. Maybe now, maybe not. Obviously, not as serious because at the end of the day, it will be a ban of some sort. So he's not going to play tomorrow night, which is the, probably the main thing. Uh, but yeah, they're taking a hard line with him, and uh, I think it'll be interesting to see the debates about this because you look at the fact that he's got a perfect record. Um, does not have a history of getting cards and uh, makes a bad challenge. It is a very bad tackle. And he gets a six match, ban, well, 12 match ban mitigated down to five matches, mitigated down to, to well, it's a six mitigated down to five. He does tackle school. Uh, Owen Farrell is playing in the World Cup currently. And that was after receiving a red card and, and a two match ban, basically, or three match ban, with one which was, you know, retrospective, um, as a repeat offender. So I struggle to sort of see how. And again, the challenges wise, you know, I do, I, I, you can't justify Daisel challenge. It was a bad challenge. He's admitted it was a bad challenge. It was a big mistake, but it just frustrates me that you know there always seems to be different rules for different players. You know, you get the feeling if this was not a, if this was not John Daisel, this was a player in a tier one team coming up to playoffs. You know, they might go, oh, okay, well, we'll you know we'll squeeze this down to a to a six match ban and or eight match ban. We're trying to reduce it by a couple of you know we'll, we'll reduce it by fifteen percent. So we can get it down to like a three match ban. You can go to tackle school. You can be one match ban. You can be available for semifinals, um, which shouldn't come into it. But you kind of get the feeling it does because all the bans we've seen this year have conveniently always sort of allowed players to return in crucial stations. Uh, Ethan Groot will be back for for playoffs, for example. As uh, you know, Farrell missed just two matches. Johnny Sexton was back for the first match of the World Cup. Um, so there have been a lot of bans handed around this year, and uh, they all they seem to sort of be quite convenient when when they do return. Um, so yeah, I feel sorry for them, and I also think that you know maybe not sub- maybe not consciously, but I think subconsciously, if it wasn't a massive injury to an Anton Dupont, if it was to a tier two player, like you know uh, you know if it was in the Uruguay game for example, right at the end of the pool stages, I'll be interested to see if that would have made a difference, and whether it would still have been in that match of a ban. But yeah, but let me know what you think down in the comments below. Smash like on the video, subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steven, and I'll chat to you soon.